the Super Mario Bros. speedrunning record was broken. Less than it was broken. Um, previously, it was thought that speedrunner Cosmic was uh, believed to have tied the speed re the speedrunning record of four minutes fifty seven seconds and two hundred and forty four milliseconds. But um, he actually improved his time after tying it, and now the speed the speedrunning record for Super Mario Bros. is four minutes fifty seven seconds and 194 milliseconds. So we shaved off just fractions of the of the time and also about three frames. Interesting. So with this, this is one of the oldest and most popular video games of all time. Oh yeah, it's classic. So it's a classic at this point. Um, how long did the old record stand, do you know? Um, honestly, I'm not sure, but um, yeah, not sure. Okay. Because and also my other question for this is is this for a glitched run or not our glitch less run? Oh no, it's um it's a glitched run. Like there's no way you can beat the entire game in like a, in around five minutes, if, even if you like did everything perfectly. Like it, there are exploits and glitches that you'll that you need to do that well, short of a run. Same with uh, Super Mario World. Well, like as. Uh, do you consider like the warp zone a glitch? No, that's more like that's more like just a secret. I wouldn't call it exactly an exploit, but it's like a secret that you can use. Because I've, I've well, I've, I've personally never even beaten Super Mario Bros. all the way myself. It mm. seems like you would be able to do it within that short amount of time by using the warp zones because you can get to world five of eight, essentially, pretty much within a minute. Oh no, I'm sure he. I'm, there's a video out there that we obviously can't show, but. Um, we could show a video on the radio. We got this. Yeah, there's. We can't show that, but yeah, he totally used um, the warp pipes. I mean, he would kind of have to. Basically, yeah. All right. So, all right, Matt. Matt, real quick. It's just because we want to keep this story going on a little bit longer. Have you beaten Super Mario Bros. the original? No. You haven't. <laughs> I you... I wasn't born back then, so. How well, could... I, you still have the game. I mean, I own the game for the Wii. Yeah, but I don't own a Wii. That's true. That's a good point, I guess. I've personally still never been. I've tried. But the farthest I think I've ever gotten is like World 7 3 or something like that. I don't remember how far I've gotten. Yeah. But no, again, this is a big news story for a classic game that is now starting to really. It's like, well, it's a classic at this point. Yeah, of course, yeah. The, one of the best of all time. All right, so I'm going to go on to my news story real quick where. This is what it kind of took me by surprise when I was looking. Expand your universe with Neil deGrasse Tyson's new video game. Just the title of the article alone just kind of interests you, I would say. People everywhere know who Neil deGrasse Tyson is, one of the most famous astrophysicists of all time, and hilarious. Which is also considering the fact that he, people still love him even though he got Pluto demoted. Best known for his role in the titular classic Zoolander 2. Yes, Henry. That's a bad movie. Yes, it is. Anyway, but this is looking to be like a pretty good game. It's like Neil deGrasse Tyson is making a new game, which he's presenting calling it Neil deGrasse Tyson Presents Space Odyssey, which is essentially a spa space-themed building game where he's taken inspirations for games like Minecraft and Civilization in order to try and build galaxies. In order to it's essentially just as kind of a educational game, also in a way. Hey Matt, do you think it'll be better than No Man's Sky? <laughs> oh jeez, we're going there now. We mentioned we? it. We mentioned it, Matt. Well, Are you happy? Well, here's the question: Is it another Kickstarting game? No, this is fully funded. I think by Neil deGrasse Tyson. Oh. I would believe Neil De Neil deGrasse Tyson. Neil the, the, the Black DeGrasse. Science. The Black Science Man. I believe. <laughs> I believe he has enough money to fund his own game development, or at least just, like, gather the funds and, like, get it produced. And we thought, um, the guy, what's his name that did Mighty Number no. 9? We thought he had uh, enough Inafune? funds. Make, yeah, we thought he had enough funds to make another game, or he should have waited until he released his other game, but, but no. But aren't you excited for the TV show and the movie and all the things that are com like coming out for Mighty Number no. 9? After how bad the game was, I honestly don't think that's going to even happen. <sighs> And are you okay over there? No, I'm just... Mighty Number no. 9's bad, but that's not news, but I just wanted to say it on the radio. Mighty Number no. 9's a bad game. <laughs> you can say whatever you want as long as you keep... <laughs> no, I just, want it, I just want it, like, 
the public, lend me your ear. Mighty number no. nine sucks. <laughs> interesting, but yeah, going back quickly to this game, kind of an interesting idea that it's taking taking um, kind of bits and pieces of the ideas from more popular games such like uh, Minecraft and Civ, and trying to make it into almost it's been talking about a little bit more of an educational game. Yeah. Anyway, like, what? How do you guys think this game could turn out? It'll be okay. Well, it can go either way. It can be good, or it can go the way of Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh, jeez. Well, okay. <laughs> if it's an educational game, then like it's gonna have really, really tight like development restrictions. So like, even if it does teach you things and it's still fun, like it's not. I I'm sure it'll be okay. It'll it won't be a bad game. It won't be anything really to write home about, but it'll be cool. Um, it's not specifically mentioned that it's an educational game. I'm just seeing, Ooh. as I read the article, that uh, one of the things it does talk about is whether or not... It actually just kind of speculates whether or not it would be an educational game. So then it brings up the question of, from it, this game, from essentially a famous astrophysicist, do you think it should be educational? I guess. It doesn't have to be. All it really matters is, like, for the consumer, I guess, all it really matters is that it's fun. I guess that, for the developer, I guess, um, I don't know how much influence he'll, he'll have in developing it, but I'm sure he'll want it to be educational. Especially if you've seen his tweets, he's like, hey, that thing in Star Wars, that's dumb. Look at this science. And everyone's like, I don't care. Star Wars. <laughs> Have you seen uh, Neil deGrasse's work with um, both? Well, no, just with um, oh, CinemaSins. No, he, did, he they did a uh, well, CinemaSins. If you guys know what the thing that they're mostly popular for is making everything wa wrong with blank movie in blank minutes or less, oh, yeah. and then did one for um, Gravity, the one with mm. um, uh, Sandra Bullock in it, and he guest host and uh, hosted it, guest hosted it. Where I think he found like twelve different like scientific flaws with it, just within like the first like hour. Okay, I'll allow that because Star Wars is like science fiction, and Gravity is a, supposed to be an accurate movie. Well, somewhat accurate. I well, mean, it's, uh, it's supposed to be about an astronaut lost in space. What's that? Oh, never mind. The what? I was about to say, what's that one movie about like those parallel universes and that astronaut getting stuck in space? And there's like, it, never mind. I don't know. Never mind. <laughs> it was know. a really good movie. I'll try to think of it. Okay, so Matt, then, why, do you think that this should be an educational game or should it try to be, like, a, just a normal builder game? It can be whatever it wants. I think what you mean is a crafting game. Crafting game? Well, it's too, in the actual article, it labels it as a building game. Ah, uh, oh, okay. All I know is that I wasn't a huge fan of Minecraft. I wasn't a huge fan of Civilization, so it can be whatever game it it's wants. It's all about Roblox. <laughs> raise your hand if you've heard of Roblox. Uh, yeah, the whole campus is raising if their hand. If you're driving, don't you, raise your hand. If you look out the window, you'll see all of campus if raising their hands. If you're uh, listening to us, please don't raise your hand. We won't be able to see you and you'll look stupid. If you're, if you're listening to us, um, thanks. Yeah, thank you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. We need all, we need our listeners. All we, five we like of you are like really important to us. Yeah. We love you. We, we, we love you fam. Yeah. All right. So any other news stories we really want to talk about? We ha got a couple more minutes left in the segment. Um, oh yeah. Oh. So <laughs> Matt, did you, did you have something you wanted to say? I said something that I absolutely wanted to say. And uh, I wanted okay. To you know okay. What? You know what? I'll allow yeah, it. Yeah. Matt, what do you want to say? So I wanted to at least mention this. If it has anything to do with No Man's Sky. No, it has something to do with like the no other Man's big Spy. company that I want to talk a little okay, bit about. Okay, that's fine. Mm. So, if you heard recently, and if not, well, if you're listening to the news, you may have learned that the new Call of Duty 4 Remastered is going to require the Call of Duty Infinite Warfare disc to be in the console in order for you to play Call of Duty 4 Remastered. And it's like, what the fuck? No one wants to play your piece of... All right, so yeah, we're gonna have to cut that off for, for say, tune in. It's like for next time we're gonna talk a little bit about more games. So su tune in with us. We are listening to Super Radio Bros on KUGR Cougar College Radio.
Hey there, guys. Thank you for listening to Super Radio Brothers. Uh, we're going to take a bit of an extended delay here for a moment. Um, as you may or may not have heard during the last segment, one of our radio hosts said something that we are not allowed to say on the radio, so he has been kicked off the show for today. Uh, but please stick with us. We're trying to find a new host, or we, me and Henry may just continue if that co- comes to be the case. So thank you for tuning in. We'll be back in a few moments with Super Radio Bros here on KUGR Cougar College Radio. I'm not the same dog you have known As I've written in stone Oh, am I right or wrong Looking at one number
like kiss girls won't you promise her smack is she pretty on the inside is she pretty from the back Yeah.
Are you are you calling me through a computer? You have Skype on that computer? Damn. Okay. Piss and ass. You're going to hear me say, oh, piss. You guys should have got a time slot after 10 p.m. so you could say whatever you want, whenever you want. Oh, bummer. Yeah. Did you check whether I I uh, show up on the recording or the audio? Okay. I have my I have my computer audio muted, and I'm just using a headset. So. Hey everybody, Super Radio Bros, we're back. Yes, we are, yeah. A <laughs> uh, bit of a mishap. Uh, uh, Matt got so mad about No Man's Sky that he just had to leave. Yeah, we had to leave real quick, and now we are going to have our debate segment, but now we have a new host on the show for today. We have David joining us. Hey, David, how are you doing? Hello, I'm doing pretty good. Yep. All right, great. So we talked with you a little bit. Thank you, buddy. First off, thank you so much for helping out on the show today. So no problem. Go- challenger no, no approaching. Problem too, I got no issue. Yeah, new challenger approaching. Approaching David. <laughs> All right. So next up that we're going to talk real quick about is our debate segment, where every week it's a co- we call it objection. Every week we have we take one on what sh- we take on one issue of gaming. Uh, one side of it, represented by each person, and then a moderator tonight. Henry is going to be our moderator. Me and yep. you are going to have a debate on the console. It's like on console or PC. All right. Opening statement, console versus PC. So who starts this thing? Ign- so Ignore that. You can start it if you would like to. Um, all right. So I don't have an issue with consoles in general. I think, I mean, I, I owned a PlayStation. I've owned 
PlayStations. I've owned Nintendo products, but I game on a PC. Um, I have a PC made entirely out of used hardware that cost me around $200, and I can play most AAA titles that come out. So in terms of cost to performance, I think PC has the win there, but it's also at a desk and not as comfortable as gaming on the couch. <laughs> All right, so for my opening argument, I'm going to say that gaming, like at its most truest form, I feel, is in front of the TV with a controller in your hand. That's how gaming started, and I think that's the true. Like that's how the, I think the majority of people that play games are gonna play it on the console. Yes, PC has great features where it has a lot more like availability for games. It has a lot more like accessibility, and a lot of people feel like it has better hardware to run games, which is definitely one of its best points. However, PC is like PC game as a console gaming is quickly catching up to that. I feel. With how well like some of these games are running and the quality of the games that are coming out on the consoles, it feel it feels like it's ju- excuse me just as strong as it's been even say twenty years ago. That's that's a fair point. I'd argue that console gaming holds PC gaming back a bit. Um, so if it feels like console gaming is catching up, that's because we've been kind of chilling around waiting for the Xbox One to be relevant. Uh, sorry, that was a huge burn. Um, we actually didn't even hear it. You kind of cut out a little bit there. Say that oh, again about I the apologize. Xbox One. Um, I feel like consoles have been holding PC games back. And then the other thing is exclusive titles. You can emulate almost anything on a PC nowadays. Let's stop. All right, so I'm going to start asking you guys some questions real quick. All right, so um, a- um, Alex, you're kind of a gaming Puritan. Mm-hmm. So... What do you think of, like, other models of consoles? Like, there's slim models for the PlayStation 2 and 360, and um, there's new models for the PS4 and Xbox One, like the Neo and the Scorpio. So what do you think of, like, re- of, like changing the hardware for consoles? Like, doesn't that make it more like PC? And what do you think of, like, so new hardware is coming out for the same console that you own? But it's better. What do you do? Do you rebuy? Do you buy the new model or? That's one of my. I think that's probably one of the biggest weaknesses of uh, console gaming is that every time a new console comes out, a lot of times you have to buy that if you want to continue playing. Whereas with a computer, you can buy a new computer, but a lot of times you you're not going to have to for years unless you choose to. Whereas gaming, a lot of times you're almost forced to buy into new consoles, which I think, as I said, is its biggest weakness. But still, from there. It's still, I think it's still in its pr- most purest form when played on the console. All right. So, David, pretty much the same question. What do you think of, like, um, of, like newer versions or newer versions of a console? Like, different so, models? So, the PS4 Pro is not Project Neo, right? It's, a, it's like a half iteration, I think. I believe so, yeah. Which ki- kind of bothers me because... If it's going to have increased graphics performance, which I've read the, the, like, the capability of its graphics processor, it's, it's not quite double what the PS4 had, but it's getting close. And backwards compatibility, I see a huge issue there. And if Ubisoft decides to make a new game, and they, they say we want it to be on the PS4 Pro, and it won't run on the PS4 Slim or the PS4 Original, they're not going to make it for the old console. So in a way, it's just another new console. And in a way, you have to buy it if you want to keep playing new games. And it's also not what Sony promised with Project Neo. Yeah, and it's kind of similar with the new 3DS, how you can only play like Xenoblade Chronicles on Xenoblade Chronicles 3D on the new 3DS. That was always one that I've always mm-hmm. kind of figured out with uh, PC gaming and why my always big one of my biggest problems with it is that it always just seems that people, the community for PC gamers feel that they're elitists almost in the gaming community because of the fact that they play PC. What is your opinion like on that, David? I would like to stop any sort of you know people that, that go around talking like that. The whole point is to say that not that PC gamers are better than console gamers, but to say that in j- objectively PC gaming on a PC is better than gaming on a console in 9 out of 10 instances. If you don't include exclusive titles... Um, 
I don't see any any way. Because, I mean, I can set up my PC next to a TV and run a controller to it. And once you're in the game, you can't even tell. And it, it'll, it'll look better and probably run better. With old, new, emulated titles, it's kind of unlimited. Like I said, I don't have anything against consoles in any yeah. way. We're just trying to have a little debate here to see which one is truly, like, I think the better form of gaming in every sense that we could feel. All or right. at least in certain senses. In, in every sense. In certain if, senses. Because the console is almost, I mean, it changed a little bit when uh, Microsoft included, like, cable, TV, and stuff, and when streaming became a thing. But consoles are standalone gaming boxes. So I'd argue that, yeah, they, in a sense, uh, they... They symbolize gaming better than a PC because PCs can be used for video editing. They can be used for browsing Facebook. They can be used for a host of other uses besides gaming. And in a sense, the learning curve can be a bit steep um, for some people. Uh, it can be a bit steep. So because it's a console, I'd argue that it symbolizes gaming better, but does it perform I'd argue that a PC does better, All and right. you get more utilization out of it at the same device. All right, so I'm going to inject really quick, and I'm going to ask, um, how much time do we have? We have about seven minutes. All right, so pro maybe one or two more questions? Uh, depends on how long we talk, but yeah. All right, so next question. Um, David said this before in, like, defense of consoles, but what do you guys think of exclusives? Do they hurt gaming? Do they – or are they good or bad for gaming? Because well, that's the major, like – that's one of the. Who are you big, asking? Um, Who are you asking? I'll start with Alex first, because that's one of the bigger reasons to own a console. Yeah, I can kind of see. I think it honestly is kind of a weakness for gaming, just for the sole fact of it makes it forces you to buy a console because of a certain game. Like my biggest pet is like you know that I own a PS4, but I don't really want a PS4. The only reason why I own it is because I'm a huge fan of the MLB The Show franchise, and that only plays on PS4. And there's no even mainstream market baseball games anymore except for the show because 2K went under with their with most most of their sports franchises except for FIFA and um, NBA. Well, not even FIFA. FIFA is a different franchise all in itself. But no, yeah, I think it it's honestly a good and a bad thing for gaming, just because again it makes it so that it, it makes it so that other uh, consoles are at least able to be used a lot uh, a lot better. But, like, because, like, David, let me ask you, because I'm not a big PC gamer at all. Um, are, mm. like, are games, like, sports games like Madden, are those on Steam? Yeah, you can get NBA 2K17, you can get, you can get Madden, they're on Steam. Okay, so, like, that kind of gets rid of the, one of the big things I was thinking about of exclusives. So, um, but still, yeah, I think it's still, it's a bit of a double-edged sword, I feel. Um, for me... I can emulate a PlayStation 2, a Wii, and anything below that. So those exclusive titles um, aren't necessarily exclusive to me. I'd say exclusives hurt gaming, but definitely help the companies that create it. So they they're what keep um, uh, you know the consoles, the console wars. If I am running, I was gonna say so, that joke a little bit earlier, but yeah, I kind of held off. If if um if I don't have a problem with a title being exclusive title, and I've kind of been appreciating all most of the PS4 titles, uh, including which one shall not be named, <laughs> No Man's Sky was released on PS4 and PC, uh, as well as I think Rocket League initially, a couple other titles came out on both PC and um, PC and a console, but they they kept it from another console. They kept it from Xbox in this case. I feel like that is a good way to market for a specific device, but in general, I think it hurts the industry, because it leads to the exclusive DLC stuff, where if you buy Watchdog on PS4, you'll get you know 20 hours extra content, or something like that. That I dislike extremely. All right, Alex. Because I mean, the game oh, shouldn't become in. You shouldn't be able to sell an incomplete version of a game for a different console. That okay. I think is just kind of scummy. I agree. All right, so Henry, you're gonna say? Uh, 
Oh, I just I was just wondering about your thoughts about that in response. About can you save the question then for me one more time, please? Oh no, in response to David's comments. The exclusive DLC. Oh yeah, that's it, that's always been something. It helps I, the industry or it helps companies, but it doesn't necessarily help the industry as a whole. Oh no, I think what it mostly does is just messes with gamers. I mean, at this point, take a look back to games like to games from like some of the earlier generations, like say the N sixty four GameCube eras, where there really wasn't DLC. I mean, there's maybe some add-ons you could buy on mm -hmm. um, that, which is, I think, the first form of DLC. Yeah, there were, like, expansion packs, I think, for the N64. Exactly, but now it's getting to the point where you have to... So, But those were truly, like, extras. Whereas a lot of times now where it seems like DLC is, like, an entirely new game, or you can't function on the game without this DLC. Right. Which it feels the season is pass is what completes it. Mm -hmm. It's, like, without the, the $50 season pass... So unless you drop 110, your $60 game is like half complete. Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> there, it was kind of funny. I saw this picture the other day while I was just kind of browsing the Facebooks, and it was a picture of like like old gaming versus new gaming, and it was a picture of this guy at a fast food restaurant, and it said it had a picture of a bur a full burger, but um, and it said the game, and then add-ons were like a like a drink or fries or something like that. But in New Age Gaming, all that was on the burger was just the meat and the bun, and then everything else was like DLC, 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 DLC for like lettuce and all that fun stuff. And then add on, pa add on pack season pass for like all this other stuff. Where now it seems like gaming has been essentially you have to buy a whole lot more stuff just to play the singular game. Yeah. You know what's atrocious? Like the Battlefield 1 limited edition. It doesn't even oh, ship yeah. with the game. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, just, that's atrocious. Ugh. All right. So, um,. We got two more minutes, so we have time for one more question and then closing statements. All right, do you got okay? So one last question: um, Did we cover the advantages for consoles? Uh, mostly just talking about that. It's a little more for the puritan of gaming and for um, couch gaming. All right, yeah, couch gaming. How about one last thing? How if what you about prefer a controller entirely, yeah. it doesn't lend itself. You don't have to buy a controller to use it. It comes with it, yeah. but and exclusive. Okay, Henry, you're going to say? Oh, yeah. Um, how about handhelds? Where do they fit in between, like, console versus PC? Because I think there are different advantages to handhelds. I feel Definitely. like it, I feel like it's, like, almost an entirely thing altogether because at this point, handhelds can be played pretty much anywhere because they're portable. That's the, their biggest advantage. Whereas I don't know if you can play Steam games anywhere. Uh, well, computers that you can buy that they're just like a tablet, six inch, eight inch tablet with like removable controller handles on the side. But those have been shown to be gimmicky, yeah, and little... just not perform as well, overheat stuff like that. Yeah, it's but like... not really the solution. The solution is a desktop computer with a keyboard and a mouse. I agree. In my, in my opinion, so... I, and with a controller with supported games such as racing games. They're the games I prefer to play with controller. So then this kind of goes along with the fact... Let's ask you a question then, David, on this. Would you consider handheld systems as consoles to go with my argument? If they do, then that's another advantage for console ga for console gaming. If it's another thing all entirely, then it's not. I wouldn't consider it an entirely different thing than a console, but it's definitely a console you can take around with you. Um, we've seen this with cross-platform like Wii U and 3DS games, Smash Bros. available on both. Um, they're, I mean, in a way, they're the same game, but they're sit on a different piece of hardware. Uh, the what way I see is um, handhelds have that thing that PC doesn't really have: is that you can take it on the way with you. Okay, so and from we're the countless to... rumors, the countless rumors that NX is going to be a portable as well as a home console makes me kind of smile. All right. Okay, so Dave, we're going to have to cut you off as we're getting close to our break. Henry, any closing thoughts on all of this? Uh, gaming's cool. Gaming is cool. Agreed. All right, so yeah. guys, coming up next with Super Radio Bros here on KUJR Cougar College Radio, we are going to move on to our game show segment, Game On. You're not going to want to miss it. Stay tuned. You are listening to Super Radio Bros on KUGR Cougar College Radio. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yo. Um, 
Uh, I, I, yeah, sure. What is game on? No. Cool. Hmm. Hmm. It's pretty interesting. What are we going live again? Okay. Yeah, and I promise I won't Google any of the answers. Hmm. Oh shit. See, I I'm gonna have to like not just. <laughs> yeah. I okay. Uh, I'm ready. Do I need to like write anything down? Okay. So I imagine once a number's been stricken off the list, you can't call that number anymore, right? Oh, okay, so there's 17, or 14 questions total. All right. Oh, okay. There's PS Easy. <laughs> PS. Hey guys, welcome back to Super Radio Bros. <laughs> Great intro. Yeah. Super okay. Radio Bro. Super, super. And thanks again to David for keeping on the show with us. David, how are you feeling after your first segment on, on air? Uh, this is the second segment that I've been on air. But uh, after, I said I'm after your first. Oh, oh doing, doing pretty good. Yeah, you got to listen, David. Gosh. We're going to need to listen even more as we're getting onto our, onto our main segment, Game On. As I've explain to David during the break and to our audience last week I'm going to explain the rules of game. Game On is a trivia based game show where each contestant is going to have their own game board. On this board is going to be seven questions. It's like seven tiles. they got to pick a number between one and seven and answer the question. There are seven different categories. We have easy question, hard question, savage question, music clip, lightning bolt. Lightning bolt is a music clip for one. I'm going to play you about 30 seconds of a gaming song and you need to name what game it is from. Lightning bolt you have 30 seconds to answer three of five questions as fast as you can. Quote this, where I'm going to say a famous quote from gaming. You need to say the qu what game the quote is from. And then wild card, where you can pick any of the categories except for easy question and lightning bolt. And you get a point if you get that one right. However, if you pick savage question and get it correctly, you get two points instead of one. The winner at the very end is the one with the most points. All right, uh, quick question. Yeah. You don't have to tell me, you obviously don't have to tell me the details, but are there any questions in the game boards where that are like way too obscure for David? Like I know last week we did Blue Dragon, 
And that's like no that, clue what that is. Exactly. Like that was only a thing that like all three of us knew about because Matt had a copy of it. What I've done for these is that I have looked up questions. I've made my own questions as well. And I've made these so there are – it's going to be harder than it was last week. There are some – there's a one or two maybe of somewhat obscure games, but not all of the questions are obscure. Okay, I just wanted to make sure it wasn't, like, skewed in my favor. Like, if there was another Blue Dragon question. I can tell you right now there is not another Blue Dragon question. Dang. All right, so the most important decision you guys are going to make on the day, who would like board one and who would like board two? Uh, Dave, do you want to choose? Yeah, well, it's, it's, yeah, Dave, uh, you're the guest. You could choose. I choose one. Okay, so I'm going to mark that down for David. That means that now Henry is board two. So, but since, uh, you know what, David, you're still our guest, so I'll let you pick first. So just choose a number between one and seven? Between one and seven, and I'll tell you what to do. I choose four. Number four is, quote this. I'm going to say a quote from, from a game, and you need to tell me what game it is from. You have 30 seconds to answer the question, though. All right, ready? All right. The quote is, a winner is you. Oh, no. Mm-hmm. You have 30 seconds. Um, I don't think I've ever heard that before. I'd honestly be surprised if you did. As I said, I'm I wasn't kidding when I said this not, is harder. I do not know the answer. Do you want to at least take a guess? There's, there's no penalty uh, for wrong answers. Hard back down. Um, no, I, I can't even imagine. All right, the game is pro wrestling for the NES. Okay. The reason why I chose that is because everyone knows the quote, a winner is you. So I want to see if anyone actually even knew where it had come from. Yeah, the quote itself is like, that's really popular. It's mimetic. And uh, I just didn't know the game. I didn't know the game either. But yeah, yeah so I, that, I guess I just is lucky. For I've, you I've seen it quoted before. Yeah. yeah, everyone knows that quote. Right. So sorry, you are O for one so far, David. David. All right, so Henry, your first, your first pick. Uh, two. Number two is the savage question. Oh, jeez, like Randy. Randy. Randy says, "Macho man." All right. Anyway, the question here. Exactly how many buttons does the Intellivision controller have? Uh, 12. Is that your final answer? Um, four. Is that your final answer? I guess it'll have to be. The ant you're close for the first one. It was 16 buttons. Seriously? It was, the Intellivision was made back in the 80s where the cool ki all the cool kids on the block had the most buttons on their controllers. Uh. And the Intellivision was, I think, the most with 16 on Holy one crap. controller. Yeah. Imagine trying oh, to play. Yeah. Imagine trying to play a game now with sixteen different buttons. Well, if you think about it, that's pretty close, right? If you count every direction, the Wii plus four yeah. plus four. I guess that's true. Like yeah. the, well, the Wii U is pretty like well, close. Plus start and select. That's fourteen buttons. I guess yeah, that's the, true. Yeah, the Wii U is pretty close. It's like on your standard. Xbox yeah, but I would, controller. especially if you count the touchscreen as a button. That's true. All right, then. So Henry, you are also O for one. So David, this it's your time to pick a number. Heated. I choose number six. Number six is lightning bolt. Again, our lightning round. I'm going to give you a category, and answer, and you have to answer five questions within 30 seconds. I'm going to get my timer up real quick. The category is Pokemon moves. You have to. Okay. I'm going to name you. I'm going to say a type of move. Well, a move for you, and you need to say its type, like say electric or fire. Okay. Alrighty. So as soon as I get my stopwatch up, we're going to start. Here's the pressure. Three. Two, one, War of Time. Uh, Psychic? No. Gyro Ball. Uh, Fighting? No. Razor Wind. Flying? No. Pin Missile. Bug. Correct. Yeah. Mist. Uh, Water. Ice. All right, so you got one of five on that. Roar of Time is a 150-power dragon move. I'm such a scrub. It's all you, you scrub muffins. No, um, all right. Gyro Ball is actually a steel move. Razor Wind is a normal type move. I pick. I put that in there kind of to be a jerk. I was move. like sure if it wasn't flying, it was definitely uh, steel. Yeah. Because razor. Yeah, but it was. It's normal type. Um, pin missile. Well, you got that right. Bug. Man. Yeah, I know. That's the reason why I made. I wanted to make this harder than last week. And then mist is actually an ice type move. So. You I are. I kind of figured once I got wrong. Yeah, it's either water or ice, and it was you just got unlucky on that one. Alrighty, so Henry, your next pick. Three. Number three is the wild card. 
for you. So you can pick any category except for easy question or lightning bolt. And if you pick savage question and get it right, it is worth two points. So wait, I can pick any question? Any category. Any category. Um, I'll go with lightning. With lightning bolt? No, I said you can't go with lightning bolt. Oh, sh- I'll, go with quote. I'll go with quote. Quote this. All right, let's see if I have my trivia idea list. All right, here we go. Ready for this one? Mm-hmm. I am error. Uh, this is actually another very famous quote. Ah, uh, uh, jeez. Uh, yeah, 25 I, I seconds. I know it was like NES. Uh, oh, oh, this is Zelda 2. Is that your final answer? Yes. You are correct. It is Zelda 2, The Adventures of Link. For some reason, I thought it was like all your... I like mentally confused it with like all your base are belong to us or something. Yeah, I could see how... It sounds like that. It sounds like it'd be something like that, but congratulations. You have gotten... I I took the first napkin and the first point. What the first napkin? No one will understand that. It's fine. Nope. It's fine. I said it on the radio. It's fine. Someone will appreciate it. (laughs) All right, so David, you're now down by a point. It's time for your next question. Number one. Number one is a hard question. So okay. not the hardest we have, but easier, th- but harder than easier questions. Not much different from previous questions. This one okay. is really hard. <laughs> it's actually not that hard if you've at least been paying attention a little bit. There were twelve Oof. amiibos launched in Wave One. Name eight of them. Uh, Peach, Mario, Luigi. Bowser, Toad, uh, Link, Kirby, uh, who? Captain Falcon, Samus, um, ten seconds. Young Link, or Toon Link, uh, five, four. Three, Mewtwo, two, two, I know one. that one's not right. No, you actually only got five of them. Of the twelve amiibos, was like the twelve amiibos were DK, Fox, Kirby, Link, Mario, Marth, Peach, Pikachu, Samus, Villager, We Fit Trainer, and Yoshi. So eight. Dang, of, that was a bunch that I could have got. Yeah, eight, you, eight of those were like the original Smash characters, right? Um, let's see the original. The only one. Let me see here, because of the original, you have DK, Fox, Kirby, Link, Mario. Pikachu, Samus, and Yoshi. The only you don't have is like Luigi, Captain Falcon, Jigglypuff, or Ness. Oh, okay. I figured there wouldn't be any of the new ones, but I guess I was wrong. I guess no, yeah. I, fi- I figured we Fit Trainer wouldn't be in there. Yeah. Does he still get the point? That's five out of eight. No, you had to name eight of them. Oh, okay. That's cool. Yeah, right. sorry about that. So you are currently 0 for 3, David. But it doesn't okay matter because you're not you're not a scrub. You're not a scrub just I'm okay yet. with being a filthy casual. We're all scrubs here. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Henry, you got your first point last time. Let's see what you can do here. What's your next pick? Uh, four. Four is also a hard question. Yeah. So, this is actually I I thought I'm making this a savage question, but I decided to go with hard because it's still able to make able to be answered. I think. Um, what made popular, like, while it was made popular from Contra, what was the first game that used the Konami code? The Konami code, oh shoot. The up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BSR, yeah, 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 select. Yeah. The first one to use it. Oh, was it Castlevania? Is that your final answer? Yes. That is incorrect. It was oh, Gradius. Oh, oh, Gradius. Gradius was the first one to use the Konami code. Dang. I tried to find what it was used for, but I couldn't find it. So if you could find that and let me know, that'd be that'd be great. <laughs> All right. So again, not, not going to respond to that. You should you should respond to that. Oh, uh, here's my response. I don't want to respond. Okay, that's great. All right, David, <laughs> please save me from Henry by picking another <laughs> by picking another number. You have two, choose- three, five, and seven. Wait. Choose three. Choose you choose three. three. That is wild card. You could choose any category except for savage question and lightning. I don't know, except for uh, easy question and lightning bolt. I choose a uh, music clip. A music clip. Interesting. All right. Well, I was going to be a jerk for this one, but I'm not going to. Oh, you're hoping that the music quality is good over. Yeah, let's hope so. Well, um, I hope that you'll be able to. I'll play it uh, pretty loud here in the control room to make sure that you, you can, can hear if it. If you send me a link, I could listen to it as well. Um, I can't because I would have the title oh. in it. <laughs> so I actually can't. I so we'll try that. to see if it works here. 
So we'll give it a go here, but let's try this one. All right, could you hear that? Nope. I okay. didn't even know anything was playing. Okay, we're going to try that one more time. So I think I know what I got to do here. So give me like five seconds. All right, you ready? Uh, yep. Could you hear it that time? I didn't hear literally anything. Okay, so I'm gonna try and send this to you as a file. I'm just gonna rename it as as what you're doing. Yeah. So, music. What kind of file type is it? Uh, I think it's an MP3. Okay. So I'll send it to you real quick over Facebook. Sorry, folks, we're experiencing some technical, <laughs> technical difficulties. difficulties. Okay, so just gotta give me a second here because I'm trying to be productive. Here at Super Radio Bros, we pride ourselves on our professionalism. <laughs> With how today's going, don't even joke about that. <laughs> All right. Oh, jeez. Okay. I just sent it to you. So it play. Just showed up and it. Okay. All right. So play. Twenty seconds. Yeah. You only listen to the first twenty seconds of it. Oh, I recognize this. Mhm. Mm it's a good jam. It's a great song. I was surprised when I heard it, what it's actually from. Um, I can't think of the game, so I'll just make a guess. Is okay. it, um, no, I have no clue. Just make a guess. Um, Super Smash Bros. 64. No, but I could see why you would get that. That is Corneria from the original Star Fox. Okay. I honestly thought it was F-Zero. Um, I thought that, I was surprised it wasn't an F-Zero, to be honest with you. <laughs> All right, so can you make sure you turn off that clip before we keep going? Yeah, it's off. Okay, perfect. All right, so, Henry, you have one, five, six, and seven left to pick from. I'm going to go with seven. Seven is lightning bolt round. Cool. As you said, I, as you know how it works, we've got, as soon as I get it up and go on the stopwatch right here, I've got to ask you five questions, going to give you the category. The category this time is Phoenix Wright, the name of a case or not. Okay. Yeah, I, I, you know, I had a, you know, I had a fun time making. Yeah, this. you saw me like, creak my neck in a circle and like just disbelief. For I've those never who played Ace Attorney. For those who don't know, I am a huge Ace Attorney nut. For some reason, no idea why, but I am. So objection. Yeah. Hold it. We need to continue with the segment. Um, all right. So all you need to do is say yes or no to whether it's the name of a case or not. That's easy. All right, ready? Three, two, one. Turnabout Sisters. Yes. Correct. The Forgotten Turnabout. No. Correct. The turnabout Friendship. Yes. No. Dang it. Turnabout for Tomorrow. Yes. Correct. Rise from the Ashes. Yes. Correct. You got four out of five. Cool. Just going yes or no. Yeah. Um, one I found kind of funny was that I when I made the name The Forgotten Turnabout, I looked... That sounds like the name of an actual one. Like That sounds like a movie. The Forgotten Turnabout. Turnabout 2, The Forgotten Turnabout. <laughs> <laughs> the Forgotten starring Ro Dwayne the Rock Johnson. <laughs> All right, so Henry, that is your second point. Yeah, David, got a little catch up to you. You have three questions left, but it's still anyone's game. I believe in you, Dave. I believe in you too, David. You can call him Dave. Choose number two. Number two is an easy question. This should be the one that gets you right on track, hopefully. What is the name of Sonic's partner that is also yellow? Oh my god, Tails. Yep, it yeah. is Tails. You got your first point. Yeah. one of the easiest I, questions I, you I could ask. That's the, remember, I told you that. That the easy questions are pretty much easy enough that even a child can answer them immediately. That's the whole joke of the easy questions. Is Sonic from Angry Birds? <laughs> <laughs> it's like Sonic 2, now from Angry Birds. All right, so, Henry, 
Yeah. One, five, or six? Um, those are all good numbers, yeah. No, yeah, um, I, I, I think I'll go with one. With one is an easy question as well. Oh, uh, yeah. In Super Mario 64, Boo's Laugh is just a sped up version of what sound clip from the same game? Oh, what? I, I, I know I've heard it before, but like. Whoa. Boo's sound clip? Boo's Laugh is just a sped up version of what, of what sound clip from the same game? Oh, shit. Wait, you really don't know this? I know, I've heard it before, I just can't think no, of I have it. No idea what this is either. Wow, okay. Uh, Maybe this should have been a hard question. Uh, uh, I'm gonna look so lame. Uh, although you can't see me because this is radio, but... Well, you look lame normally. Ah, jeez. So. That, you know what? That doesn't really brighten my day. Um, <laughs> well, it's night outside, so. Is it Bowser's laugh? Is it Bowser's laugh? Is that your final answer? I guess so. I have no idea. You are correct. It's just Bowser's, just normal, like, speaking. It's kind of like his laugh with the, oh, oh, oh. That yeah. Would have been my guess as well. What? That would have been my guess as well. Mm -hmm. You get you get you get a point for you, you get a ha you get a happiness point. A happiness point. Yeah. And a half A press. Yeah. <laughs> no. Yeah. No. Dude, did you see that video about like the blinking tech? It's insane. You sent me this hilarious meme about like uh, Cooper from Interstellar. Uh, quad uh, dimensionally shifted. That's the movie I was thinking of before, but we were talking about gravity. You didn't hear that so part, funny. but we were talking about gravity before, and like, I, I was it thinking was really about that cool. movie. I was able to geek out on that video you sent me because there was tons of integer math and shit and stuff that I. Uh... All right, so again, we're gonna have to take another break. Uh, Henry, you have won. The game, game on. So we'll take a quick break. Join us oh. back again in a little bit with Super Radio Bros here on KUJR Cougar College Radio. Oh. Yeah. I did. Slip, slipped out. I get that policy. Yo. How long is your show? How long is your show, usually? Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, see ya. Hey there guys, welcome back to Super Radio Brothers. Uh, sorry I had to cut that. We had a little bit of technical difficulties with David, but we had to, we thank him for coming on to the show today. And we're gonna have to, we're gonna finish off the rest of the questions we had laid out, and then we're gonna go on to our new segment, Hand Me the Controller. So first off, let's finish off David's board. Why not? You had five. He had five and seven left. What would you like to answer? Uh, five. Five. It was his savage question, which I really wished he would have gotten to. Okay. Um. Morris, Jay, and Derek go by what collective name in their Nintendo DS rhythm game? Oh, um, Elite Beat Agents. Yep, that's Elite Beat Agents. That's one of my favorite I, I, I love that game. I've honestly never played it. It's so much fun. But, like, like, what, like as, as soon as you said, like, rhythm game on DS, like, Elite Beat Agents. Yep. 
And so yeah, so good job. You got you got a savage question right. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. All right. So that leaves only one left from David's board, number seven. Um. Okay. Number six. No. Number seven. There you go. Which is his music clip. I'm gonna Ooh. play a, a track from a game. You have 20 seconds to figure out what it is. You can get. You can guess. I'm just gonna give you dead thirty seconds. Just now. Oh, am I supposed to guess what game it's from? Yeah. Oh, Super Metroid. Is that your final answer? I guess so. That is incorrect. Oh, what is it? That's Chrono Trigger. Oh, okay. La that is the Lavos final boss battle theme. Oh, cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I still haven't beaten that. It's a good game. It's I've never beaten game. it either, but I know game. it's. From literally from everyone I, whose opinion in gaming I respect. Yep, it's a great game. Toriyama did the art. He did Dragon Ball. It's cool, and it's also like an early Square Enix JRPG. All right, so now we have the last of your board. You have five and six left. Um, ah, oh, jeez, that's a real toss up. I'll take five. It literally is a toss up. Number five is quote this. But it's like it. I'm gonna say a quote from a game, and you need to tell me what game it's from. You ready for this? Yep. Buy something, will ya? Uh, By the way, I said it has nothing to do in the game. What's the game? Is it Wind Waker? Is that your final answer? I guess so. That is oh, wait! Uh, okay. Yeah, you said your final answer. Yeah. Do, you, do you know what it is? I do. Is it RE4? No. Okay, never mind. It's the shopkeeper from the original Legend of Zelda. Oh. In the original Legend of Zelda, it's like the shopkeeper in there goes, buy something, well, yeah, and then has three items to purchase. Okay, yeah. All right, so then the last one is number six, which is, was going to be your music clip. As you know, I'm going to play you the song, and you're going to like it a lot. I hope so. I guarantee it, as they say in the men's warehouse commercials. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, here we Load, please. Load, please. Load, please. Now loading. For some reason, it's not loading. Here. Okay, and it's not loading. So give me one second for technical difficulties. It's been one second. I need more than that. Sonic Adventure. Is that your final answer? Yep. That is correct. That was Sonic Adventure. Bonus, just for bonus point, do you know what that's what part that is the theme from? Um, I forget the area name, but it's like that. It's like that jungle. -y, it's like the it's the jungle area and also like the previous area before, like when you get off the the train. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That's Mystic Ruins theme. Mystic Ruins. There we go. Good job. All right. So that is it for Game On. So thank you both to David and Henry for participating in this week's. So did you think that was harder than last week? Um, yeah, considerably harder, but all around pretty strong over, pretty it, strong overall. You think I should uh, tone it down a little bit, or should I keep it about the same difficulty? Maybe a little bit. I thought overall it was pretty good. All right, cool. So, because also we're hoping to try and get audience contestants to join in on this for us. So we will see about that all yeah. right so for the next segment we're going to debut hand me the controller hand me the controller is where we we did a version of this last week where one of us talks about a game that we want to like, that we like but the others may not like it we try to convince them to play the game normally we would have matt over there but you know how that story already so henry i'm gonna try to convince you to play a game Go for it, yeah. <laughs> the game I'm going to try and talk to you about today is like, hey, do you have a moment to talk about our, lo our Lord and Savior this video game? 
That's what it sounded like for a second how I said that. Um, regardless, um, the game I'm going to try and get you to play is Mario Superstar Baseball for the Nintendo GameCube. The Nintendo GameCube? Nintendo G -G GameCube. Cube, cube. All right, yeah, so GameCube. have you ever played this game before? Uh, no. No, have you ever seen the game before? I'm pretty sure... I've seen. I've definitely seen like one of the baseball games for Mario. All the Mario sports games are pretty solid. Yeah, they really are. But like Mario Superstar Baseball is one that kind of it really uh, jumps out at me because it's not just like a normal baseball game. It has a bit not like a bit of like an RPG standpoint to it, but also a bit of just an adventure standpoint in a way. Where the whole point of the game, essentially just no, besides just normal baseball, is the challenge mode where you start out with one of the base teams. Then you go around to other teams, it's like to other, such as the main characters, all the main characters are of course Mario, Peach, DK, Yoshi, and Wario, and each of them have their own teams of NP of other um, normal characters, including their, their sidekicks, like Mario's team has Luigi in it, Peach's team has Yoshi, I mean, Peach's team has Daisy in it, Yoshi's team has Birdo, and so on and so forth, you could probably guess the other ones. Yeah. So, from there... It's like, what you do is you go around to these other teams and you play against them in order to steal the players from those teams. Ooh. And you make a super team to go challenge Bowser at the very end. And what's really cool about it, why I said it's kind of like an RPG, um, to at least some degree, not like a full RPG, but um, every character in the game, well, every like t at least type of character, has a set of goals that they need to achieve. And once they achieve all those goals, they attain the superstar rating, which at that point all of their abilities go up, and it makes the game a heck of a lot more, a lot, heck of a lot easier. And what's cool about them is that not all of them can be just be gotten at one point. Like I've been playing the game for probably close to I think ten years now, ten plus years, and I've still not gotten everything. Wow, that sounds cool. Yeah, it has a whole ton. There's a huge amount of replayability to it. It's honestly just fun to pick up and play. And just even, like baseball. Just like baseball. But like even the hard like there's four difficult there's four difficulties to it. There's easy, normal, hard, and special, just like how there is in a lot of Mario stuff. And the special difficulty, you could still beat like beat that while getting every character in probably only a couple of hours. So it's a it's a game that you don't really need to like put a whole lot of time into. But it's a game that's just fun to play. I've had more fun playing this game with friends where one of the things we like to do is go into the exhibition mode and we literally just draft teams and they play against each other doing that that I've had with a lot of other video games. Hmm. So what do you think so far with how do you have any questions for me about the game? Um I don't I don't really know what to ask. It sounds really cool. I don't really have a whole lot of experience with sports games. I said all the Mario sports games are pretty solid. Mm -hmm. Definitely like to try out the which one was it again? The one for GameCube? The one that I'm talking about right now? Yeah. Mario Superstar Baseball. Superstar Baseball. I almost said Superstar Saga. I'm sorry. No, it's all good. Okay, yeah. So, um, is there any post-game content after you beat Bowser? Or do you just, like, does it cut to the ending? Or can you still, like, go back and get previous stuff? Well, that's actually, that. thank you for reminding me on that. There, the answer is yes and no. After each of the difficulties, that the game essentially ends right there. However, all of the stuff that you've, like, collected for all the stars and stuff for each for each goal you've um, completed, carries over to the next game you start. Okay, so it's like New Game Plus. Essentially, it's like New Game Plus. Okay, because like Souls games do the same thing. Yeah, but with this one, I feel it's better than Souls games because they actually, you know... Controversial statement. I say it in this way because New Game Plus, for le at least for those, they never end. With this, there is a way for it to end. Okay. <laughs> so, but no, yeah, with this game, it's just fun to play. I still haven't gotten everything. I've, I've gotten most of the characters, just not all, because some of them are just stupid hard. Earth? Wait, what characters are you missing? Like, Toad, for one of them. Is... <laughs> no, because his final objective, he only has four objectives you need to do, but his final one is friggin' impossible. Uh, well, at least there are plenty of Toads in uh, Paper Mario Color Splash, which is coming out this week. I, I don't know how to think what to think about that. Um, I guess get everybody get disappointed, or I guess like get content, whatever. I don't know. Well, like, cause we've we've talked about this before, and I also think we should do this instead of our final segment. We talk about Paper Mario, cause it's just me and you for this final segment. Yeah, fine. No, let's do it. No one's stopping us. What's Mac gonna What's Mac gonna do? Oh wait, nothing. Uh, anyway, hey, so then. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so. Do you have any more questions for me about Superstar Baseball? Um, how do you think it compares to like MLB The Show? 
they're completely separate games, whereas MLB The Show is very much driven on realism. Superstar Baseball are you, is all about... Are you telling me that Mario isn't realistic? Yes. Dang it. Well, here's the thing. When you can swing a bat and have the ball catch on fire... That's pretty cool. You must it's, be really good at baseball. I, he is. It's Mario. He's so great at baseball. Yeah, it's pretty. By easy. the way, I gotta say the opening credit, the opening scene for it, because that was one thing I loved about Mario games in the GameCube era. Mm-hmm. All the Mario sports games had like awesome openings to them. Like, did you ever see the Mario tennis opening? Power tennis. Yeah, yeah. power tennis. Yeah, all of them have openings like that. Yeah, that was cool. I wanted like, I'd love like a cartoon, but like a more modernized one, mm-hmm. not like the original Mario cartoons or like any of the, like the only good like. Nintendo show, I would say, was like Kirby right back at you, but like even yeah. then was a little. Because uh. like I like just don't change the official designs that much. Because like I remember that opening very clearly. You had Wario and Waluigi in it. I was like, that's awesome. Because like you never really get to see those characters do that much. I will say right now, all of them have at least something to do at least with Wario. Yeah. Because like the the baseball one, one of the teams is the Wario team. The Wario team. The War- Wario. Right. By the way, I got him in Superstar Baseball. The Wario team is easily the best team. Okay, what are they called? Like the Wario's. Um, they have um, that's actually one of the other cool things. Depending on the players that you have on your team and who your captain is, there's different names to the teams. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. So like the Wario team starts out as the Wario Greats. Then if you have certain other players that become, they become the Wario Mustaches. Then the then the Wario Garlics and all that fun stuff. There's like yeah, all of them have different names that are really cool. Like my personal favorite team to use is the Peach team for the sole fact of um, pitching is really important in the game and having a coach, well, a captain that's your uh, pitcher is really helpful. Mm. On that, but no, they all have different names, so the game is highly customizable in a way. And the game gets even better if you go to the Wii version on that same uh, concept where you can almost pick what team name you have. That's really cool. Yeah. I like customization. That really helps keep a game, like, alive and fresh. Mm -hmm. And, like, that's also why I really like a lot of, like, RPGs and JRPGs because, like, there's a lot. You can just – all sorts of little changes can add up and make the game, like, completely different experiences. So, Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll definitely give that game a try. Cool. Sounds good. I'm going to hold you to that when we get home. (laughs) I have have stuff to do. I know. That's so do I. But later on when we're just kind of starting playing games, I'm going to talk to you about it. So, yes. All right. So, guys, coming up next on Super Radio Brothers – we were going to do minute game reviews, but we're just going to talk about Paper Mario now. Because yeah. reasons. Stick with us. You're listening to Super Radio Bros on KUGR Cougar College Radio.
Riders on the storm Riders on the storm Into this house we're born Into this world we're thrown Like a dog without a bone And an actor out on loan Riders on the storm Hey there guys, welcome back to KUGR Cougar College Radio's Super Radio Brothers. Our last segment, we did a whole lot of things, including finishing up Game On, and, um, what was the other thing we did, Henry? Uh, we talked about Mario Superstar Baseball. That we did. I tried to convince you to play, and you said you'd be willing to give it a try. Sounds really cool. Cuckoo. All right. So, on this segment, we were going to do minute game reviews, where we would each take a game, and we have two minutes in order to give it a full review and and to essentially just give it a full review. This time we since we're matless today, we are going to talk about something that me and Henry both have a big thing in common, which is Paper Mario. Mm -hmm. Especially with Color Splash coming out a little bit found it was like it's a good time to talk about it. Alright, so going into this, I just want to clarify that like Paper Mario Color Splash isn't out yet, but it did leak. And, like, I've, I've only seen images. I haven't yeah. gone out of my way to actually, like, play the game. You tried uh, to, but it didn't work. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, okay, so here's the thing. Only knowing what I've seen, bits and pieces, and knowing the general direction Nintendo's been going with Color Splash, I don't think it's outright terrible. I don't, like, I'm, sh like, I'm sure I haven't actually picked up Sticker Star either, but I'm sure if I were to play Sticker Star or Color Splash... They wouldn't be the worst games in the world. Like, six is at least. Well, Sticker Star, I have had the unfortunate idea of at least trying. Mm. And that game is terrible. Okay. It's straight up terrible. I wouldn't put it, like, at the levels of, like, Sonic 06. Of course not. Yeah. But I wouldn't put it anywhere near or even in the same franchise as Thousand Year Door. Yeah, because, like, with the direct... So, for those who don't know the context... Um, Basically, the first two Paper Mario games were turn-based RPGs with a lot of, like, action-adventure elements, a lot of, like, exploration and puzzle-solving and platforming. And, like, just generally, like, it was fun outside of battle and really fun inside battle. And with, uh, and with uh, Sticker Star and Color Splash, there's, they t they've taken out a lot of the elements that made turn-based combat rewarding and enjoyable and with Super Paper Mario, which we both agree that we like, even though it has, even though it doesn't have those um, turn -based. those turn-based elements, it still has RPG elements. Like there, it, there is, there are, there is like uh, you have your items, you have your party members, you have those, uh, you have the pixels, which they're definitely not as fleshed out as party members, but they do have unique abilities, and it's fun. It's still a fun game, and with Color Splash and Sticker Star, like, I honestly don't even see the point of having turn-based combat, because it seems almost similar to me as, like, set pieces in games, where you take, like, a game like Uncharted, and then, like, the player character Nathan Drake 
is like um is like uh he's climbing up a cliff and then like a train falls down the hill and like it goes right past him and it's kind of like ooh player look at that it's so cool but like there's no real gameplay in that aside from just climbing but like it just gives you something entertaining to look at and that's what i feel like a lot of the appeal is supposed to be in the turn-based combat for Sticker Star and Color Splash, where it's like, look at all the quirky, cool effects we can do that have no real meaning outside of just being in there to look at. And But, like, you take, like, one of the things I really love about Thousand Year Door is the battle system because you can do, like, stylish commands and, like, extra inputs to to get more meter for the star power. And it's fun, it's rewarding, it doesn't detract from the game if you can't do that, but it does add to it and make and it adds this complex subsystem. But there's no point in the turn based battles in Sticker Star or Color Splash. No, there really isn't. Like if you've seen like well, I haven't seen what it's like in Color Splash personally, so I can't speak on that. But with Sticker Star, where all of your abilities come from stickers that you get and you have a limited number of them. And once you use that sticker, it's gone for good, unless you use one of the special ones. There's not a lot of good to it. Yeah, and that I goes mean, back, that's... I'm sorry, that goes back to what I was saying about, like, set pieces. How mm-hmm. they're just, like, in-the-moment things. And sorry about that, I'll let you go back. It's all good, no, yeah. But that's that's the reason why Sticker Star I felt was so bad, is because the story of it was generic. The aesthetics fit were probably the best part of it. I mean, the aesthetics look good. Mm-hmm, yeah. But other than that, the game just was boring and sad to play. Yeah, like I've seen pictures of the I've seen like pictures of like the cutscenes and dialogue in Color Splash. It seems pretty funny. There's this one part. There's this one screenshot that I saw where like this Toad was talking to Mario. It's like, oh yeah, I know. I'm just a generic fan. And it felt like such a slap in the face, like they acknowledged the problems, but as if that solved it. Because, like, most of the... Like, there are no interesting characters in Color Splash. There are the Koopalings. There's that one, like, partner character Mario gets that's, like, paint... That's, like, a paintbrush or something that gives him his powers. And there's, like, it's almost... It's pretty much just toads. They're just toads. And, like, the designs aren't even that colorful, ironically. They aren't unique or interesting, like... There's the there's like the color five or something like they're they're supposed to be like Power Rangers, they're just color swapped, like Power Ranger toads. It doesn't yeah. matter. They don't matter. <laughs> they're not interesting. They're not. They're they're cool enough in comparison, but like, there's like, because like the cool thing about Paper Mario, like especially Paper Mario, because you don't really see it in like the Mario and Luigi RPGs, but the really cool thing about Paper Mario is that like. You can talk to Goombas, yeah, and like all these all these other races, and that seems like a really simple thing, but it's cool because like Mario, Mm -hmm. like there's world building to it. Mario is on the same level as these Goomba citizens; they're not enemies, and like you have all these cool like races, like fantasy like races practically in the Mario universe that you can interact with and work with and have as like. Interesting characters, potentially. One like, thing I would like to talk about when you do, and thank you for bringing up it's interesting characters, is another re- one of the reasons why I really don't like Sticker Star is the sidekick for the game, which is Kirsty. Kirsty, which is, by the way, if you're not, if <laughs> you don't know what her name is a pun of, like immediately after looking at the name, Kirsty. K E R S T I. I have no idea. Put it in half and put and reverse it. Oh my god! Yeah, that's her name. Oh. And the whole joke is that it's sticker. She, she, yes, the whole joke with it. Well, I like I love puns personally, but her character is just bland. Yeah, like Dragon Quest does puns really well. Remember that mm-hmm. time I talked about Dragon Quest? Yeah, everyone, that was last every, episode. Everyone was entertained. Yeah, that was last episode. Anyway, going back to Paper Mario, I for what I've seen on Colors when you touched on this a little bit. I love the writing of it, which mm-hmm. that makes me very excited to see because it's it breaks the fourth wall constantly. It still is clever when it does so, and it's at least it's funny dialogue. Like one of those. One, okay, I'm gonna go back to one of my favorite lines in um, 
Paper Mario Thousand Year Door is when you're um, going above, um, as I know, when you're just about ready to confront Grubba in Chapter 3, my favorite chapter of all time, mm -hmm. um, he says, you know, while I'm thinking aloud out here, might as well talk about everything important and release the plot because reasons. And I like that because it's like, okay, it's just written like, you know what, this is all happening, might as well just keep running with this train wreck. And that's what it looks like with uh, Color Splash, is that th the dialogue is funny, it's very, like, it makes fun of itself. Like, I saw one a little bit ago where it was in a uh, group of toads. Yeah, that's, that's the picture I was talking about mm -hmm. with toads, like, I'm just a generic toad. It's like, it's like, I can't believe I'm one, I'm one of, like, 200 toads and you chose me to talk to you. I'm so, I'm so nice. Yeah, but, okay. I, like, I find it funny. You're allowed to like that, but, like, I feel like that's kind of a slap in the face where, like, they acknowledge the issues, but they don't solve it. What do you mean? What issue is with it? Like, it's just a generic toad. Like, he says he's a generic toad, and it's like, oh, this game is, like, 90% toads. So, like, why don't you, like, is that supposed to be funny? I think it's funny just for the sole fact of that it's making fun of itself in a way. Yeah, but, like, okay, but, like, that's dumb. Cause like, I, I disagree. Personally. Okay, but that's okay. But you know what? I want. I'm gonna end with this one with one question here, because uh, we're about ready to end the show off. For Sticker Star, put it like on a rating scale from Paper Mario One to Paper Mario Two on how good you think it will be. Because you've never you've never played Sticker Star, so you can't really say. I think it's gonna be worse than one. You think it's gonna be worse than one? I think one is good. I think one's okay. I but mean, like. I would put two above it. I would Easily. I would rank them like two, one, super, out of all the ones I've played. I might even go with two, three, as uh, two, super, one. Oh, really? Yeah, I just like how t uh, super works out. And I was, as I've been playing uh, the original Paper Mario, it's really not been that good. Like it's it's good. It's definitely a good game, but I just there's a lot of things that hasn't aged well. Mm, I'll have to play more of it. I have, I pick I put it back down a while ago, but I'll have to play it. Yeah, how far did you get into it, by the way? Um, haven't beaten chapter two. Okay, because I'm I think I'm done with chapter three now. Okay, yeah, I'll pick it up again eventually. Okay, regardless. All right, well, thank you guys for listening today to Super Radio Bros. I'm Alex. I'm Henry. Yep, and so tune in next week. We're gonna be doing a lot of the same stuff. A little bit things, hopefully, a little differently as we had a lot of technical technical difficulties this episode. So thanks for tuning in. Make sure you keep listening to KUGR Cougar College Radio. Support all the other shows on here. And we will see you guys.